What's up, guys? All right, so I'm going to share with you how I hooked up my panel to my portable generator in a blackout. No good electrician will ever tell you to hook up your panel like this, okay? But in an emergency, every electrician will hook up their panel like this. All right, so in that blackout, I actually did this to uh, a few houses in my neighborhood or whatever. But uh, anyway, this is how I hooked up my panel to my portable generator. This is not how you should hook up your portable generator to your house. I'm just sharing here. All right, what you do is your business. But anyway, and at the end of this, if you have any questions how you should hook up your panel to this, I will not answer any of those questions because you're not supposed to do this. But if you ask me why I did something, I'll answer those, but not how you should do it. All right. So, all right. So the first thing that happened was, is that I had a, uh, I had the generator and all I had was a, an extension cord. Okay. An extension cord is great, but I only get to hook up half my house. All right. Um, as far as now, I have a gas furnace, so a regular uh, plug out of the generator, I can run my gas furnace, my refrigerator, and maybe a few lights in my house. But with an extension cord, the only way, thing I can do is run half the house. I can't run the whole house, okay? And now hooking up the way that I did, I can literally turn on everything, you know, b besides um, ovens and stuff like that, but I can get lighting and I can get my furnace on. Now, if I turn something on, I go over, I turn something else on, I come back and turn it off. That way I minimize the uh, amperage that I'm going to be using in my house. I don't want to pop the breaker. So I can only use so much power before the breaker will pop. The first thing that I needed was a uh, 12 gauge extension cord. I need a 12 gauge extension cord. If I use the regular wimpy extension cords that you know, you can get real cheap. I can actually cause a fire because there's going to be too much load. That that extension cord is made for, um, you know, running little stuff, not a refrigerator or furnace and a bunch of lights. So, you know, it's 16 or even eight, sometimes 18 gauge wires in those, which means they're really, really small. And when you put electricity to something, electricity causes heat, which can cause a fire. That's why we have, uh, you know, different size wires that we use for different size things. Uh, the 12 gauge wire is the same thing as the same size wire that you would have in your kitchen, your dining room or your bathroom. And it can handle 20 amps, which is most likely your uh, generator is either putting out 15 or 20 amp plug. So all right, you can't see it, but it says 12 AWG on here. So if, since I hooked up to the GFI, I don't need to use the ground. As a matter of fact, I can't use the ground because your grounding has to come from the source. And since my panel has its own grounding set up and my GFI will trip if I hooked up this ground wire to the, uh, to the ground bar, but I'm not worried about it just because the GFI will trip for any shorts or it's going to trip before the breaker would trip anyway. So I'm not worried about that. So the only two wires that I used was the white and the black. All right. So the first thing I did, the most important thing that I did was shut off the main breaker. Okay. It was literally the most important thing that I did. If I did not shut off the main breaker before I do any of this, there's a risk that I could have shocked myself. Also, if the power comes on while I have the generator hooked up the way I'm going to hook it up, I can probably damage my panel and I can damage the generator. So the most important thing that I did was shut off the main. Now in my panel here, this is my main. I would shut it off. Now, on some houses, the main breaker is outside, and I would shut that off. 
literally the most important thing that I did was that after that, these wires that feed the house are not connected to any of these wires here. So the most important thing I did was shut off that main breaker. Okay. Now the next thing that I did was I took my extension cord. My extension cord, since I'm not using my ground because my this is connected to a GFI on the generator, I hook up my white wire. Okay, the white wire I hooked up to my neutral bar. This right here is my neutral bar. I know this because other white wires are hooked up to it. Neutral bar. I hooked up the white wire to that. Just unscrewed that a little bit, slid my white wire in, and I screwed it back in. The next thing that I did was found out where my furnace is. Okay, according to my panel, and I already know this, this is my, this is my furnace. All right. Oh, I skipped the step that I did. The next thing I did was shut every single one of these breakers, put them this side to the off position, and then I put this side to the off position. Okay. So the next thing I did was unscrew that and actually just stuck my black wire in with that one, screwed it back on. And then after that was done, I went outside. I, I turned on my generator. I plugged the other side of my cord. I had a strip. I cut when I got the 12, the, the extension cord, I cut that one end, stripped it and had about a foot of loose wire hanging out that you saw. All right. So I plugged it in. Then I came back to my panel and then I turned on everything that was, that was not two pole. These two breakers are connected those stayed off everything that had two poles stayed off and i turned on everything with one anything that has one this didn't turn on this didn't turn on this didn't turn on i turned on these and i turned on all of these all of these are not going to work because this right here is actually connected to this one it skips this then it connects to this skips this and it's connected to this that's what i was saying i only got half my house on because those two wires there, one's there, one's there. The first one connects to these two. The one on the right connects to these two. The one on the left goes to these two. The one on the right goes to these two. The one on the left, and so on. So since I only hooked up to one, this is on, not this. This is on, not this. This is, and so forth. That's why I can get half my house. So that stayed like that for a couple hours because I needed to, uh, I have a 30 amp plug on my generator and I wanted to get the whole house on. Now, again, I wasn't going to run the whole house. I just wanted the option to turn on any bathroom light that I wanted. Not being forced to only turn on lights that are connected to this one line. I wanted to be able to go in the bathroom, turn on light, do whatever, turn off the light. Now also this way, if you have a well, it's not going to turn your water on because the well is on two poles. It goes the one, the one I hooked up to plus the one above it. I need both of those on to turn my well on. So I went to home Depot and I got the supplies that I need. So I got this S J cord. The reason I got SJ is because it's smaller. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's thinner. And I needed to run it underneath my door, so I needed something thin. I could have ran SO cord. And all it's just as flexible. The main thing about this cord is that if people step on it, it's not like a regular extension cord. It's thicker and it's safer. And it's like people, when you go to the carnivals or a... Uh, a concert and you see cords lying around it's this stuff it's safer all right and this is what you should you should be using anyway what way and this is what i should be using anyway it has four prongs as a matter of fact oh and then i bought a connector this is a 30 amp connector and what i did to know which one i needed is i went out to my generator and i took a picture 
of what that plug looks like. That's a 30 amp plug. I would have got a generator with a 50 amp plug, but they didn't have any that we had more power. So I got the 30 amp. So I went to Home Depot, looked at the picture and made sure I got the same one. This is pretty easy to wire. All you do is take these two screws out. This whole bottom two white pieces just come out. Then these two screws, you screw them out and pull that out. Stick your wire in and W went to the white wire. G went to the green wire. And then there was an X and Y. Now this cord, this is a 10-4 SJ cord or you can get an or I could have got an SO cord. If my plug would have been a 50 amp plug, I would have had to get a different plug. Take a, I would have taken a picture, went to Home Depot, got the right plug, and this cord would have been an 8.4. And all that means is that this right here is a 10.4, it's 10 gauge, and there's four wires. 8.4 would have been eight gauge, four wires. Well, anyway. So what I did is I stripped, again, about a foot off. Now this one, since it's not hooked up to a GFI, I hooked the green up and the white up to my neutral bar. Now, some panels that are not bonded, I'm not gonna explain what that means, has a separate bar over here with all the grounds or all the bare wires. So there'll either be this, there'll be a bar over here that has a whole bunch of green and bare wires, or they'll all be hooked up, the greens and the whites will all be hooked up to one bar. Mine is bonded, so my green wire goes there, and my white wire goes right underneath. It's very important that I put them both there. The next thing I did, since it's winter time, is I went to where my air conditioning is. This right here is my air conditioning. And I took, now remember, I did still have the main breaker off. Remember, I, I still had that main breaker off. And all of these were off. So I took the um, these two wires out since it's winter time and I didn't need air conditioning. I took them out and taped up the ends or wire nutted the ends. I wanted to make sure that these wires didn't touch anything after they were in here. So I took them out and taped up the ends. Actually, I wire nutted them. And then... This wire went to there. This wire went right underneath. And then after that, I went out and I turned my generator on. I plugged the 30 amp plug into the generator. And then I came over here and turned this one on first. That's the one with that the uh, my 10.3 was or my 10.4 was hooked up to. Then one at a time, I turned on all the breakers except for the two pole ones. Didn't need them. Um, actually, I did turn on. Um, I have a electric stove top, so I did turn that one on, and it has like five burners. And I just made sure that I just use one burner at a time, and I never tripped the breaker on my generator at all. So we used one burner, I had both furnaces on, and I had any light that I want, and we were watching TV. Um, I really shouldn't have watched TV just because I don't have a filter on this, but we did anyway, we're, you know, it was four days, five days that we were out of power. And then all I did at the end of it was to know that I had power afterwards is... Some of my neighbors told me that they had power. I took my voltmeter and checked to see if I had power, which I had none. So I kept my generator going. Three or four days later is when the power came on. And every day I would, in the morning and the afternoon, I would check with my voltmeter to see if I have power. And then one day I finally did. So when I finally had power, 
I actually had to do everything reverse. So I came over to my panel and I shut all the breakers off. Then I went out to my generator and I shut the generator off. Generally, I shut the generator off. I turn the gas off. That, don't, that way I don't leave uh, gas in the carburetor, but that's a different video. Um, I turned the generator off. I unplugged the cord from the generator. Then I came over here and took the wires out, screwed everything back up. Then I turned the main on. And then one at a time, I turned all my breakers on and I had power. And then I put the... Uh, dead front or the panel cover back on. All right, so this is how I did it. I'm not saying for you to do it this way, but you know, an emergency, what are you gonna do? All right, so this is Johnny's tips and tricks. And if this helped you out, hit the like button. That helps me out. I hope this helps. Actually, it shouldn't help because you shouldn't be doing it this way.